All right, so I decided to take a quick departure from the 31 day build challenge on my aircraft and take a trip out to Milton 2R4, uh, Peter Prince Air Park, I think is what this is, on another fellow Zenith builder uh, that's building a uh, 750 Stoll, not the cruiser, but the firewall forward is about the same. We're both using the Rotax engine uh, with actually a warp drive uh, propeller as well. So um, we're gonna go around this plane for a minute here and, and talk shop on Drano's. 750 stole. All right, so Drano, uh, thank you for taking the time to talk with me today and go over your aircraft because we are building nearly the same airplane uh, and pretty much the same firewall forward. But tell us about your project here. I think it started out in somebody else's hands and you acquired it recently or how many years ago? It was about two years ago now and uh, you're right it was uh, started by another gentleman uh, who aged out of the project and uh, donated it to our EAA chapter and then we held a bid uh, for it and I won the bid and I ended up with this uh, uh, aircraft. Basically the wings were closed but not finished. The fuselage was closed but just barely. Uh, the surfaces uh, the surfaces were kind of sort of closed. We had to build the flaperons, had to build some of the other aspects, but uh, had a good start on the airplane and took over from there and have been working on it for about two years. All right, so over the years things change with these kits. Sometimes there's new additions and updates to the plans. What is, what is the first thing that you did in bringing this up to, uh, to speed on the design of uh, the current plans? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question because the, we mentioned that I took over this kit. It was an old kit. It was an old serial numbered kit and it was a flat roof kit. And uh, what they call it, the beanie mod, where they started putting the curved roof on it. That was one of the first changes that I did to what I took on as a project because I like it better. It's, uh, I don't know, it's just, I like the appearance of it and it was the right place in the build to do it if it was gonna be done. So I have the curved roof, uh, plexiglass roof and not the flat one. All right, so what other thing did you do to kind of make it your own or continue on with the plans? All right, so the original builder did not want, this is a 750 stall but the original builder did not want the slats. He closed in the front end of the uh, wing without even the uh, hangers for the uh, slats to be put on. I stayed with the plan that he started out, with the, with the project as he started out doing it. Um, I know there's going to be people in the Zenith community who think it's a crazy idea, and I know there's going to be people in the Zenith community that don't mind the idea. Uh, I tell you, they build a 750 stu uh, Stoll, they build a 750 Cruiser. Uh, I have jokingly said this is going to be a Stuzer because it, it, won't, it won't have the Stoll capability. What will that get me? It will get me maybe a few knots maybe a few extra, uh, a little extra airspeed. It will, uh, the penalty of course, will be the really high angle of attack, slow uh, performance that uh, Chris, Chris Hines originally designed for this aircraft. So in exchange for doing that, uh, any consideration of doing VGs, um, whether it's glued or riveted to the top of the wing? You know, I've talked to people, uh, the general, the consensus of opinion is put the VGs on it. Keeps the air uh, uh, energized over it. I have talked to other builders though who have built it with just like this without the slats and uh, put VGs on it and took the VGs off and said they didn't notice. You're not flying at the same high angle of attack. You're not flying at that really slow high angle of attack performance. You're more on the wing. Uh, you're always on the wing, but I mean, it's a different flying airplane. Yeah, so some of the things are different from the cruiser or the stole. And one of them is, I think my, my cruiser has this access hole, but the stole does not. Mm -hmm. So 
I have many friends who have built aircraft, and they, with one really big guy, who I call a friend, <laughs> says, you can't have enough excess panels, all right? So what I did is I put one that was not in the plans on the left side behind this bulkhead, and on the other side, I put it ahead of this bulkhead so that I can get in, reach the cables, reach the wiring, all of my wiring splicing, I have access to the back. Other places where I have access panels, large access panels, are underneath the wing. These are very large access panels, and I can get in there, get to the wiring, get to the fuel plumbing on the tank, uh, and have access. Um, because, because of the way this was built, you might want to come around here, because of the way this was built, a lot of the skin, the, he, he made a mistake and he cut a lot of the skin off early. And I had to build a fairing, but the fairing will come off. The, scare, the fairing fits right on here. By just taking three screws out, I can, well it's more than three screws, but I can take this fairing out and access the plumbing where it goes into the fuselage and then down and forward. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, offering everything from state-of-the-art glass cockpit options to advanced control modules that power and control your entire aircraft. Gradia Aero Group at GradiaAero.com, proudly representing these best-in-class brands for experimental general aviation. Sherwings, BD Aviation, and MW Fly. KFA, Kit Planes for Africa, engineered for adventure and build for the bush is their motto. Offering several stole kit aircraft options like the Expedition, Safari, Bush Baby, and Explorer. Find them online at kitplanesforafrica.co.za. Bravo Fox at bravo-fox.com. The U.S. distributor for black shape aircraft providing sales, maintenance, spare parts, and repair services. Located at the Sheridan Airport in Indiana. Stewart Systems, manufacturer of non-hazardous waterborne products for covering and painting aircraft. Offering in-depth workshops teaching you how to DIY fabric and paint. Find them online at stewartsystems.aero. Visit us online at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for all things DIY aviation. And consider supporting us on our Patreon page to help us bring you more original aviation content. All right, so jumping into the interior, let's talk about some of the routings of cables and fuel lines and kind of the, uh, the thought process to your plan for the interior. Yeah, so the, the plans uh, are simple and straightforward and a really great idea. It's basically a hose that comes across, tees here, comes down here, comes up the side, goes forward through the firewall with a gas collator down here. I wanted, I wanted a fuel switch. I wanted to be able to balance fuel, uh, balance roll with fuel usage. So that meant that I had to bring them from both tanks. I brought them down the pillars. Originally thought I could put them down the middle of the control channel, but I could not. It was too tight. So I brought them under the passenger seat forward through through the front and then into the console with a cover to the valve on the back, making sure that I cle stayed clear of the rudder cables on either side, right where they cross over. And now I can select my fuel left and right. Okay, and you're able to do very minimal amount of work underneath the, um, the seats, and then you did all of your electrical underneath and behind the panel. That's correct. That's correct. And how, what, what are you powering your instrument panel with? Powering my instrument panel? Oh. In other words, what are you using for instruments? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an iPad. I'm going to have the Falcon avionics system. I'm going to use everything to the iPad. The only round gauge I have is a radio head and I could have put that into the Falcon system as well 
uh, had I selected to. I just wanted it a, a, a separate. Basically, I put the yoke in. I wanted to be able to change channels with my left hand without reaching across. It was an ergonomic thing for me. This is the way I wanted it. Uh, it's just it, it would be easier to put it in in the uh, iPad. So those of us that are not familiar with Falcon, what is the Falcon system? Uh, it is a uh, flight data computer and an engine monitoring system that run an application on an iPad. So enter in Scott, <laughs> <laughs> who we've interviewed before, is a cruiser flyer, cruiser driver, and him and Drano both have come up with, I think we've seen it on the Zenith forum, but what do we call it? It's like a tenor, not a Tinderman washer, but it looks similar to. It's a spacer washer that does that basically doesn't do anything other than hold off the bushing hold the bushing farther off of the mount on the mixer that's all and scott it, you were saying it's the outer ones that seem to have a binding issue yes when you when you deploy the flaps on these because this mixer uh here changes angle it can interfere with the this okay. the uh the flapper on rod control rod uh i found you know i didn't create this i found another uh, builder online that had used these i thought it was a great idea so i purchased a bunch of them and i have them in different sizes based on the size of the the bolt um, and they work really well uh to have a standoff distance for the uh, flapper on rods to help uh, so you don't get binding so moving to the front of the airplane, and this is why I came to visit you selfishly today, is to get eyes on a Rotax installation on a Zenith, because I am there right now. Uh, but kind of how did you progress through this? I assume you did the entire firewall forward yourself. I did. So, uh, by, I did it myself, but I did not build the motor mount. What I did is I got the Zenith firewall forward kit for the Rotax engine. All right. So the only the uh, that that is pretty much complete. The only thing you have to do is carefully fit it so that you can get uh, the plumbing, which is extensive on a Rotex. Everything is it's it's almost reversed from a a Lycoming or a Continental. You get the plumbing in there and get the exhaust system in there. Uh, you just have to work it until you can get everything to fit. The instructions on what has to be done is pretty straightforward. The instructions on or the uh, effort in accomplishing it sometimes gets a little complicated and tight. Now, just a quick overview from the plans versus um, the plans kind of stretch a variety of aircraft, including the low wing. And I'm sure you've noticed this as well. This is a 750 platform. And one of the things that's different is the firewall, how you do your, uh, I think they call it a bell crank. I call it a torque tube for your throttles and then your choke. And so how did you go about um, installing those pieces on a 750? So in the firewall forward kit is this weldment, they call it a weldment. Uh, it comes in there. What you have to do is make it fit. You have to make or use the bearings that the, 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 the mounts that they have. Figure that out. You have to be able to uh, uh, tailor the pass-through so this bar gets all the way through. All right, and then you have to to get it in sync with the uh, cabling system to that run your carburation and your choke. This bar is what coordinates the left throttle and the right throttle inside the cockpit. That's what ties them together. Then, then what you have are the cables that operate the same on both sides to two different carburetors. And not only do you have to tune the carburetors, obviously, in, in this one, because it's not fuel injected, you have to sync up the, uh, the uh, rigging so that everything responds the same, the throttle, the bars, and the cables to the carbs. Okay, and then on the choke, they use this kind of uh, two into one spreader bar 
sure I get a picture of that there. Yep, that's plants. Okay. That's that's part of the plant. It comes with the plants. Uh, again, that's pretty that's pretty straightforward. Your challenge, of course, is taking a cable and going through the firewall without making a big uh, pressure relief, a tension relief uh, loop. And the way I did that was um, I took square tubing and made a bracket to stabilize it, made an oblong hole instead of a round hole, an oblong hole for this cable, and just brought the cable against the interior of the instrument panel over and then up to the uh, choke on the instrument panel. Uh, Drena, you want to mention a little trick that you decided was a good <laughs> safety backup in the event a spring broke. And I'll point out the spring uh, right here on the throttle because Rotax kind of loads them wide open. That's correct. So unlike a Lycoming or a Continental or, or typical aircraft engines, the Rotax engine is defaulted with that spring to wide open throttle. So you can get by in the plans with only having spring tension against the back of this bar. I decided I wanted to be able to, in the event that that spring broke, I wanted to be able to have positive uh, force forward and aft. So what I did is I did a, I put a small cable keeper inside the tube that Zenith provides. Uh, I, some would call it paranoid. I'm not paranoid. I just thought it was a better idea. <laughs> it's a, I, I had some, I bought some at a lawnmower place and Zenith uh, actually provides some with their kit. So you have a lot of different options of ways to capture a cable inside that tube. Drano, so everybody picks out an airplane because it has a mission uh, or a plan involved. What was your mission for this aircraft? Um, well, this will be my second airplane. My other one is an RV-6 back there that I built. Uh, that one was to get up, do aerobatics, go fast, have fun. Uh, this one is to get up in the air, go slow, go low, and have fun. <laughs> All right, well, we I, should do that with this one. This is, it's more of a regional player, but that's where I fly most of my flying anyway. We'll see which one I keep. All right, buddy, just a quick update for the Saturday update on the 31-day build challenge. Took a break the other day, had to get some Christmas shopping done, which I give all of you permission to go out and buy some gifts for your family during Christmas. but. And then I took a kind of a departure from the normal build and went to go see somebody else's build, which I'll, I'll be finishing up an edit on that as soon as I get home uh, this evening. But I need to go kind of put my hands on another project to better visualize um, how things came together here on the throttle and the choke and the engine mount in general. But today I came back after kind of verifying that and completely mounted the I think they're calling it a bell crank. I'm gonna call it a torque tube for the uh, throttle. So that is in, installed. Uh, basically what I had to do is, is just notch out this piece here on the, um, the flange and radius it out. And uh, luckily I was actually able to pick up two of the rivets that were already on the firewall and just kind of move things over and I'll space the difference with a couple of washers and a thin washer. So I'll take a little bit of that play out with another washer or two. Anyway, hope you guys are having fun working on your aircraft. I'll check in on you next time. Quick shout out to our patrons over on Patreon and our co-pilot status, Zach Newsom, Mike Babcock, Lynn Gardner, Gary Martin, Michael Smith. Thanks for watching this episode of the Experimental Aircraft Challenge. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode. See you in the next one.